Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Look at Luis Garcia, tanned, oh, loving mm -hmm. life. Ali Renault's here as well. That's his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> not tanned, not loving life. <laughs> <What? laughs> uh, for Luis, what does Jao Felix need to do to take the next step in his career and be in the conversation as a top five player in the world? Huh? Would leaving Atleti be best? Well, I guess uh, everybody's been talking about the consistency. I think we all agree that he's a fantastic player, a lot of talent, ability, creativity. He's got gold. He was one of the top scorers last season. But that consistency is what I think that Simeone has been asking from his side. Last year, he ended up very well, and I think that that's the way he's going to start this season. Simeone knows that he's a key player if they want to be successful this season, trying to achieve Champions League final or arriving until the last part of the La Liga season with chances of winning it, but definitely that consistency is needed. How is that? I guess he's going to need games, he's going to need a little bit of patience from Simeone, but Simeone is not ready for that, so he needs to start delivering from the first minute. I think that he's one of the best players in Europe, one of the young, young talents, but he needs to continue that consistency needed. He needs to play every single weekend, give it that 7, 8, 9 uh, grade that is needed from a talent like he is. Luis, do you think Ishka wasted his time at Real Madrid? I know he won titles, but individually he did not shine like a legendary player, uh, Raul Iniesta or Xavi. I think that he was one of the most uh, uh, unbelievable players that uh, the Spanish national team had. Uh, I think Real Madrid had one of the most, uh, the, the most important talents that we had and probably we don't give the credit that he deserves. It's true that he's a special player. He's not a player who you're gonna put to run behind the ball. He needs to be on the ball, but every single time he had the ball, everything could happen. He's got that talent, that uh, uh, creativity uh, that you couldn't take the ball away from him. He's one of those players that even though that I'm not a Real Madrid supporter, I enjoy watching play. I put the TV to watch Real Madrid because of these kind of players, and Nisco was one of them. So. I think that he's one of those special players that Real Madrid allowed to leave and to uh, give him the chance to, to find another challenge. But uh, he's one of those that you want in your team every single week. Here we go, Ali. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that Brazilian Ronaldo is better than Cristiano when compared in their respective primes? Cristiano had more goals a season and in calendar year consecutively. He had more assists too, trophies, etc. Right. I'm talking about the prime of each player, the very best level of each player. I like Brazilian Ronaldo. He is and, and was at the, at, at the pinnacle of his career, the combination of so many different players that we see nowadays. He had strength, power, defenders would bounce off of him and while he was doing that he still had the ability in tight spaces that you see from a guy like Lionel Messi so imagine Messi with strength power dynamic movement where defenders are coming to challenge and they don't even have to stand a chance because they bounce off of him with that sort of strength with that sort of power with that sort of ex explosion Brazilian Ronaldo, his issue was not whether his pinnacle was the best it could possibly be, it's that his pinnacle was very short, mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Some would suggest that the parting didn't help, others would suggest that injuries played a major role. Regardless, we just didn't see how long that pinnacle could be, and, and that's why he doesn't rank above some of these other players in the history of the game. But for me, his best was better than most. I think I'd prefer to party with Brazilian Ronaldo. Yes, yes, that too. Yes. I think that well, would be... Why do you look at me when you say that? Yep. I'm just saying. <laughs> right. I just, I, I'm just doing it. Why you look at me? This is a conversation, Peter. Oh, it's not a conversation I want to have, that. Well, why are you <laughs> pretending that you've never partied, Shaka, in your life? Yeah. What? What's the next question? <laughs> I've seen you party. <laughs> no, no, I mean, no, and you like it. No, you haven't. Wait, wait, but you do like Brazilian Ronaldo. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Ahead of Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes. Well, where do you stand on this race? <laughs> I'm with the guys. I'm with the, uh, Ronaldo, the Brazilian Ronaldo. I just enjoy more. That's why we were talking before. I enjoy watching these kind of plays, even though yeah, you hate Real Madrid. You don't count, Maurice. <laughs> oh, he just said he turns on the TV to watch Real Madrid. Yeah, yeah, he turns talking, off to watch Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, Ronaldo. Oh, come on. Not Real Madrid. Oh, yeah. You're talking about Ronaldo, and uh, Ronaldo he got part of Barcelona, so I can say that I enjoy very much Ronaldo. <laughs> 
Ali, uh -huh. did you ever consider playing in Liga MX? I did. And if there, Hercules can score goals there, surely you could have done. Anybody could score goals. Right. Hercules could score goals there. <laughs> you guys said it. I did not say it. <laughs> but it's a very valid point. Well put. Well said. Uh, and, and there were moments in which perhaps there were opportunities to do so. You, know, you have to remember the profile of the Venezuelan player now is much different than what it was 30 years ago. And to think about the possibility of playing in Mexico was, wasn't was all that realistic. Um, and, and so I, I sort of had to find my way where I could find an opportunity coming from Venezuela, and that was Major League Soccer. By the time I had established myself as a, as a player in Major League Soccer, I was getting a little older to the point to where now playing abroad wasn't nearly as, uh, as appealing as it would have been before because by then I had a family, I had right. kids, wife, and, and so I was thinking more about the stability of the family rather than my individual dreams. It's all about the family, Ali. Yeah. Absolutely. That's Over it. his individual. What a hey. guy. Lewis, on the other hand, traveled the world in oh. ah. <laughs> just, just pack them all up. <laughs> We're moving again, kids. <laughs> How did you enjoy your experience in Mexico, Luis? Very much, very much. One of the best experiences. Uh, I was expecting a good football. It was very intense, tough, difficult, fantastic crowds. Uh, a lot of passion from the supporters and definitely one of the most incredible situations that I faced because you could go to Cancun where it was uh, 95 uh, humidity and then go to Toluca where it was 3,100 meter uh, height. So it was this kind of different situations that put you uh, to the edge and well, I enjoyed very much. Uh, football was great in Mexico, so uh, good fun for three years. Shaka, we keep hearing about discussing whether or not players fit a manager's system. Did you or any of your teams find it tough to play a manager's way? Well, if a manager wanted you to play out of the bat, you'd be in trouble. Yeah, but no, no, <laughs> nobody wanted to back then. <laughs> That's a bonus. Yeah, everybody just wanted to kick the ball, as, as we, we keep discussing. Um, so, as far as a goalkeeper, no. I'm trying to think of, of players who maybe didn't suit uh, a, a certain style. And I can't say I played in, in, with too many players like that. Right. Newcastle was all about attack, and, and Keegan recruited players accordingly. Harry would just find spots, find spots for, for whoever he brought in. Um, so he never had that much of an issue with, with, players, with players himself either. What about you, Louise? No, actually, no, I haven't. I, every single time that, uh, that I've seen, of course, uh, when a manager arrives to, to a, a club, what he tries to do is try to adapt he, the system to the players you got. You always have the football intelli intelligence from the uh, player's perspective, and then you need to understand what kind of player you have to try to fit it in. But I haven't seen that kind of situation on a, on a, on a player. Yes, of course, you've got anarchy players where you don't know where they are come from, but uh, definitely at the end, they fit into the system like everybody else. For Ali, mm. what do you think the game is lacking <laughs> nowadays okay. compared to your playing days? On the other hand, what is the game doing great today compared to your era? Uh, I would say hold up play, playing with back to goal. And selfishly, that is something that my game was very much right. Uh, I would suggest something that I look to do. Right. And one of the few things that Just I did really well. Can you, can you show us, Ali, how it would come in? What, 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 oh. what would your technique be? Uh, the, the technique was very simple, Dan. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a, little bit, a little bit wider than most center forwards. Right. And so, so I was the out. My design. Uh, yes, it's that's it, backside uh, out. Uh, and it was more like a turtle mode, you know? You just kind of did that. It was like this. See? Nobody can get through that. Hold up play. I'm Playing sure. with my back to goal. I'm not sure anybody wants to get yeah. through that. Oh, no. That's yeah. the issue. What we need to bring back is turtle mode. Yes. Yeah. Turtle mode was fantastic. Goodness <laughs> like, The point of playing with your back to goal and hold up play, I think a lot of players nowadays, because of the false nine or however they, the attacking players think of themselves, they don't think that that's an important part of the game. And I think it's critical for the success of teams if you have a guy that you can play the ball into, release some pressure, and then you have all your playmakers coming right. from behind. What do you think, Luis? What's the game lacking these days? For me, it's about creativity. I think we are missing those uh, special players who can break uh, defenders. It's very difficult to find and They always have, uh, top teams have, but it's very difficult to find those special players that when they're on the ball, something can happen. Uh, the game is becoming more 
uh, powerful, uh, it's faster, uh, players are more athletes, but I think that creativity we are losing in every single year. What about turtle mode? He doesn't like turtle mode. <laughs> <laughs> when you start on turtle, I'm, uh, I'm not sure the game was ever like turtle mode. Uh, it's ironic because that's your speed as well. <laughs> yes, I mean with turtle mode across the board. Uh, uh, what's the game doing great today, Shaka? Lots of uh, love for goalkeepers, more. 80 what? million, 90 million for a goalkeeper. It's about time you get some respect in this game. <laughs> I, I think the pace of the game um, is, is, is certainly one that it has made it a lot more exciting as, as you go over the years. But then a lot of that is down to the science and understanding yeah. physique, etc. Um, so just that ability of players to go at that pace for the full 90 minutes. I think adds to the spectacle. And the quality of the pitches. Like, if you, we, yeah. there's that video of Stevie and all the goals that he scored, mm. and you're playing on yeah. unbelievably yeah. bad surfaces yeah. compared I, to now. Where I'm, so, when I was back in Newcastle, I went I went to see St. James's Park, and of course, this is pre season. And it, it honestly is like a carpet. It, it right. really is ridiculous. And then, speaking to the doors, when happened to be there, they were fourth or fifth in terms of pitcher this season, right. to think that they are far better pitchers than Newcastle, I was just... Well, I mean, wait a minute, there's a ranking? Oh, no, no, there's... Oh, oh, oh. Which used to win it. Yeah, it okay. like, it's, yeah. It's, it's yeah. huge. It's, but didn't it's, you, when you were training at Pompey, was it you used to train in the park? Uh, we was having a discussion at Reading as well at one point. Wow. Um, Reading at one point, we, we didn't have access to, to the training ground. It's a long story. And we just, train in, we just train in public parks. We just show up in a public park and hope to find a space that we could conduct some kind of a training session. Shaq, you just mentioned players' physique. How is your physique these days? Uh, svelte. Oh, well, I'll go with. Dr. Hislop. Yeah, you know. <laughs> when was the moment, Luis, you realized it's over in regards to being professional soccer when player? It, when he came to the studio, <laughs> his first ESPN show, wow, he was yes. like, that's it, God. I'm done. <laughs> hey, I player know, of the year I, in the Masters. Yeah, well, <laughs> yes. I don't know. I guess I, I, for me, for everybody, is uh, for every player, is different. For me, I think it was uh, trying to continue enjoying. Uh, that last part, uh, when I went to Australia, I was 38 at that time. I was enjoying very much. I could see that I could uh, help to the team, but I could see that every single week was more, uh, more difficult. Every single week, I had to rest more. I couldn't train every single uh, uh, minute of the, of the training. I had to just... A part of it, if, it, if I didn't want to, to feel my, my, my muscles uh, uh, maybe with problem or soreness. So I think that was the moment where I said, listen, it's better to live it like this because the best thing is that you decided to leave, not that football push you out of the, of the game. I tell you what that sounded like. It sounded to me like when Luis went to Australia, he's like, coach, at, at my back. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little tight. <laughs> coach. Not today. Yeah, it was yeah. like that. It was like that. Yeah, yeah. Are, are we doing the squats? No, I can't do that. Yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> was it Petr Cech or Lehman who told you that you should return? Oh, uh, it was Lehman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we won that game, though. Really? We, we beat Arsenal. 7-6. Seven, six. <laughs> <laughs> Three two it was. There you are. Well, West Ham were the last team, last away team to win at Highbury. And that was that game. Wow. When Lima just turns to me and go, so what are you gonna do at the end of the season? You're gonna retire? That's <laughs> 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 before the game started. <laughs> I was like, goodness me. <laughs> Take that knife out. Um, oh. Favorite summertime drink is the final question while standing in front of the hot grill. Mm. Oh, Luis, what'd you go for? I'm going for a sangria, of course. Oh, oh easy no. question. Yeah. See, Luis would have been great if you really hated sangria. Like, and, like, they've got a whole song that's dedicated, and like, people would bring you sangria all the time. Uh, no, I just want a nice white wine to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you can start with this you, can, <laughs> you can have it. You can have it without alcohol, so it's fine. I mean, you can enjoy it both ways. Oh, man. Who, who, where did the song come from, Luis? Did you start it and then kind of subtly get it into the crowd? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I guess it was the right. I mean, uh, the uh, English, when they go to Spain, most of them, they drink sangria in the summer yeah. because it's all over the coast. It's like a, a typical drink So in the summer. So I guess that because Garcia and Sangria kind of have that, uh, that rhythm, so they decided to put it. But not because at that time I used to drink because I no, I didn't drink until when I was 32 or something like that, so right. not for a chance.
<laughs> he didn't drink until he went to Australia. Ali, <laughs> 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 oh. summertime drink. Oh, it's coming. It's coming next I know week. You're on holiday next week. <laughs> that's uh, the first thing that's going to happen. I'm going to put a piña colada in my yes, hand. Yes, oh, yes. Uh -huh. I'm in Ross in Madrid in a dodgy karaoke bar with you and a piña yes. colada. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was a big piña colada. It was. It's like a fishbowl of piña colada. <laughs> Shaka? Over a hot grill, you have to drink a beer. Yes. If you're grilling, you have to drink beer. Yeah, very nice. It's, it's a must. Yes, indeed. Uh, that is it. That brings <laughs> us to the end of today's show. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.